Hello and welcome to the 3D Code Experience. My name is John Pennington. I'm continuing on with the uh, series of uh, uh, modeling in 3D Code. We're doing this in cooperation with the Cuba 5 fans on the Cuba 5 fans blog spot. Uh, basically, we're just again going through some simple modeling procedures in this one. Uh, we're going to do another tutorial soon that's actually going to focus more on the actual tools and how the software itself actually does what it does. Um, so we're continuing right now. I was starting a series of chess pieces. Right now I'm going to make the rook and this will be the last piece that I make because from the rook you've you've already made the pawn, the knight, and now we're going to make the rook and from the rook you will be able to use all of the tools from those three to create the queen and the king with no problem. So you will have the ability to create your own chess set now. Um, and then I'm, I'm thinking after this, I'm going to go into a holiday theme. And I'm thinking that I'm going to do something um, along the lines of Christmas. And I'm actually going to build a scene over the next couple weeks uh, rather than just an object. And we're going we're gonna to walk through that together in a series of videos. Uh, and uh, it'll be a trial and error thing. But what I want to do is I want to create like a background that could be a card or uh, an invitation for a Christmas party. Um, but basically a winter slash holiday type thing. So uh, bear with me. We'll, we'll be doing that next here. Now first thing we do is we always go up here to our uh, windows and we restore our workspace. This one's already restored. But anyways, go to that. If you don't know what my workspace looks like, go back to my first couple videos. You'll see where I've uh, created my own workspace and I've saved them. Make sure you're in... Uh, orthographic view not perspective because uh, if you turn it to perspective then things start to get a little curved and then when you're you're modeling your model will not be precise when you're looking at orthographic it um, removes some of the uh, perspective angles so you're looking dead on on your objects at all times this way when I do a, if I were to do a slice across here for example if I was to do uh, a cut here but on the actual object it would cut it straight in fact I'm gonna do a cut I'm gonna cut the top of this off let me bring this down a little bit and I'm going to bring this down about here because um, and I'm working on the base and what I've done is I've loaded in the pawn from the last few tutorials alright and I'm thinking right about there and I'm going to cut that the top I can just eliminate because we won't need the top for this uh, version alright and let's go down here to the pose tool and stay with the rectangle or the square whichever one you prefer I like the rectangle because it allows me to be a little more adjusting I gotta make sure I'm in the right selection I don't think I am um, also I have to be on the base um, paint select let's just go with that make sure I don't want to ignore my backs because I want to I want to be able to extrude in a sense this whole object um, I was using the freeform the last time that's the interesting thing is a lot of tools remember things from the very last time you're doing this you have to be able to know how to go back and forth very quickly so like in this one you have your regular gizmo you can even hide the gizmo while you continue to paint other areas um, now let's bring the gizmo back by unhiding it and I like to use a regular one you could you could use um, uh, this one or you could use the the freeform um, the freeform is kinda nice you you've actually this is actually a cage and you can pull and deform this in, in an odd shape. I'm going to press my number two, go back to the front view. Um, I want to not use the free form and I want to use the regular gizmo. Okay. Now you notice here it happens to be in a, um, a position that's not, um, well, if I were to pull this angle, it's going to pull things over here crooked. Okay. Let's control Z that. Um, so we want to reset our axis now it's straight up and so let's pull that up some we're we're creating our uh, our rook and I think I should have went further down into the body because that looks a little too skinny so let's control Z that and I'm just gonna click off of this and back onto it and I'm gonna do another selection a little further down I'm gonna go about there reset my axis and then let's go up with that and that's not too bad um, so what I'm what I'm gonna do here is and I'm gonna get my fill tool out now because I want to kind of get rid of some of this roughness here I want this to be more of a slope up there so first thing I want to do is make sure my symmetries are on correctly 
so let's tall guard okay um i'm gonna do a i'm gonna do a radial symmetry uh four i think will be sufficient for what i'm doing although i could increase it um you see how that way the brush goes all the way around this will keep it a little bit more uniform on on a uh, all the way around basis I could uh, change this to maybe say eight and so now I've got eight dots okay so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna fill let me make my brush a little bigger and because I've got four brushes going there's a little bit of a lag there on my screen all right that doesn't look too bad let's uh, try smooth first okay it looks like it's too much resolution yeah we've got 700 let's go over here and see what happens if I reduce this so I'm gonna resample this uh, to 0.5 see what it looks like want to stay smooth okay I took it down to 190 let's go back to fill and let's see what happens yeah oh yeah now now we're seeing some actual filling let's uh, go to a straight-on view Okay, since I know it's working okay around the edges, I don't need to see the edges in the same way. And sometimes even since I've got the radial on, I could go to my move tool and I could actually just pull it out a little bit. But I don't want to pull that because that's a dot. I need to make this bigger so that it pulls in a larger area. It has more influence. Okay. And then I can I can adjust this when I'm done. All right. I'm looking at this a couple different ways and I'm going to smooth this when I'm done but what I'm trying to do is get the bulk of the shape out so let's now go back to the smooth tool start running over this that we just pulled out of there and that's not too bad now you didn't have to change the shape of this I could have had a skinny rook with a with a large top I'm just playing around giving you some ideas of some things you can do so there's a lot of a lot of options that are all up to you on this when it comes right down to it and again I'm just taking my time and and playing around trying to get see the little bumps that you see in the shadows I want some of those out of there let me see if I what happens if I resample this down again uh, we'll go to point eight this time and smooth and that's not too bad you have to be careful on your resampling sometimes you'll lose your sharp edges on certain things see how the bottom's not quite as crisp okay so for now for the sake of this tutorial I'm not gonna overwork this I want to work on the top part of this more than anything well, now what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna make this uh, expand it out so let's go back to our pose and we're gonna select them mm, let's select about there and let's just make this bigger okay and let's see what this look like if I pull it up might be a little too much I'm gonna accept that and then I'm gonna select again and go back to my pose all I did was click on a tool to get off to to set the mode you can also hit the enter button um, I do a lot of um, I do a lot of this um, from here now what I did is I select further down so I can kind of make this come up taller okay and this might be too tall because I don't have my my other part there for reference but for now like I said I'm more showing you how to model this rook than how to make it precise I'll let you go ahead and and uh, what I would have what I would recommend is that you bring a layer up here that's uh, the, the finished pawn or you bring the model in that's the finished pawn um, and then um, you have them side by side so you can have a reference for height okay and that's not hard to do but uh, we're not going to do that right now all right so there's our shape and what I want to do here now is I want to cut off some of this odd looking top and I may stretch it after I cut it we'll see so there it is and yeah let's go back to pose and pull this up a little more always remember to reset that axis because it's usually slightly off I'm not sure why that's an irrelevancy there it is right there okay now when you see a rook a rook normally has notches the whole way through it okay now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go back to my symmetry and I'm gonna take this eight and make it six which is kind of an odd one because 
if you cut six around there, you won't have, normally you won't have one straight across, okay? Um, but the way I'm doing this, I forgot to apply that tool, so hit enter. All right, so the way I'm doing this, you see these these tools are kind of right in the same spot. So I go up here to cut off. I'm going to, just for the sake of getting an, an, an unusual look, now right now we're getting, I'm and I'm in a circle, we're getting six of these holes being cut from all sides. I'm going to take this almost to the top. I'm going to build my circle. Now the, the interesting thing you can do here is, is uh, you can... Uh, Hold your space and move your circle around, okay? So if you don't like where you put it. Now the nice thing is because we're using this the radial sym symmetry, these are all going to be evenly spaced no matter where I put it. Okay, so there they are. There's my rook. Now about the only thing I don't like is the way this looks here. So we're going we're gonna to take that out a little bit. I'm going to maybe try smoothing it. And I'm keeping my radial on. You see, I just want to get rid of some of that sharp, sharp edge there. In fact, I may even see. Let's go to an exact top view. Let's go to our pose. Let's use the circle again. I'm still on radial, which is not hurting me. Mm, I don't see what that's done. Didn't do anything. So let's get out of that. All right. Let's go a different direction. Let's go with the the move tool up here to the top. Let's make this circle smaller. Let's get into the center and let's push down some. See what we got. Not too bad. And let's uh go down here to the bottom of this and kind of pull it out some. Okay. Let's do this again, but just a little bit larger. So back up like this. Let's get into about the center. Whoops. Let's make our circle bigger. Let's see what happens here. I don't like that. I think it pulled too much. Yeah. Control Z undo that. Let's go over here to the smooth. Let's just see what we can get in there. Let's try the car for a second. See what we got. Let's change this brush though. Let's go to the smoother brush. I use the smooth brush more than any other brush. Let's control Z that. And we're going to invert it. So that it cuts rather than adds. Okay, I like that. Now let's smooth it. I was using the carve tool inverted with a fairly smooth tip. And you just take your time and you'll be able to. And again, I've got, like I said, I've got a six symmetry on this, which matches my cuts. Okay, let's go back to the car for one second. See what we do. I'm just clicking now and we'll smooth again. Let's go with the curve one more time. Let's lower its depth some. Alright, smooth. Smooth might not always do it. Let's go to fill. I like to use these tools back and forth. And that's all I'm doing is just making some depth in there. I don't like that. I'm going to control G away from those last couple moves. Back to because I liked it right about before this. Right there. I was happy with that. I just wanted to see if I could make it a little more pronounced. But that's basically how I would make a rook. Um, let me go to the side here and show you a couple things that you might do. Is Go to your pose. Select right there. Reset your axis. Let's raise the top up a little bit more but then let's uh, set that and then do another selection but this time we're just going to select the tips of this reset the axis and pull those up some so again how whatever looks the way you want it to look okay go to my front view 
I can get into some other details or up here. Remember, I've got my symmetry on. So let's go to my pose tool. Let's bake that, hit enter. And I've still got this on, so it's only going to select whatever I tell it to in here. And I'm just going to select right about there. Don't, don't look like it selected anything. Click enter. So I'm going to select a little higher and go there. Okay. And reset the axis. And I'm going to just shrink this in some. Let's see what happens if I push or pull that sometimes. Whoops. Control Z there. Shrink that again. Okay. Sometimes when you push or pull, you get a an interesting look so it just depends on what you want so when you're done that's your rook um, you might texture it with um, with a stencil let's pull these up a little and here's a nice little rock pattern Let's shrink this down. Remember, I've got symmetry on now, so this is going to look a little different than if I just apply it, apply it. Let's go up here to airbrush. Let's take this down some. And I'm going to I'm going to make this a odd selection. I'm going to do a rectangle. I'm going to select from, say, from here down to here and see what it does. Okay, that's pretty bold. Let's close this for a second obviously not very nice and there's a couple reasons it's not very nice the resolution is very low control z out of that let's increase the resolution we're at 212 right now take it up let's see what it'll go up 845 is a nice one let's go back to our stencil we're on our airbrush where was our depth radius the depth is based on the radius let's take the radius down to 10. we'll try that and again from here down to just above that curve and it's applied close that there we go ah, it's a little rugged but I could easily you know work on that a little bit more I could create my own pattern it's a little more seamless but uh, now I've kind of got some texture in my rook I do thank you for watching I hope you've enjoyed this uh, please leave some comments I'd love to hear from you um, when I go, like I said, when I come back the next time, it'll be that I'm going to work on making a winter slash Christmas type scene. So thanks again. Y'all have a good day.